In this week's Blizz Pro Weekly, the Iron Horde invades Azeroth, console owners rejoice in Diablo 3, Heroes of the Storm get some nifty new features, esports enthusiasts find out who is playing at BlizzCon in both StarCraft and Hearthstone, and what exactly is getting announced at BlizzCon this year. Hey guys, welcome to the newest episode of Blizz Pro Weekly. As always, I am your host, fantastically bearded and actually changing the hairstyle. I know, it's going to throw off your whole world right now. Chris Arnone. Now, before we get into any specific games, we have a boatload of BlizzCon stuff, alright? So BlizzCon is now three weeks away, and Blizzard has revealed their map and their schedule. Okay, first up, let's talk about that map. Now, the first thing you'll notice is they have extended BlizzCon into a new hall. So now, where the, in the past, BlizzCon store used to be there, there's going to be another hall that goes to the StarCraft II tournament stage. Now, if you take a closer look at the bottom of Hall C, you'll see a pretty good-sized blank area. Now, last year, this was filled by the Heroes of the Storm play area and had the same basic layout. It's just missing that play area. Now, some people are speculating it's for crowd control because that area can become a bit congested after main stage panels, but we have other ideas. It, it, well, we'll get to that in a moment. Just be cool, all right? Now, for the schedule. First thing you'll notice, once again, on Friday, after the opening ceremony, nothing. Fucking nada on the main stage for over two hours. That has never happened at a BlizzCon before. In the past, when Blizzard releases their schedule and they have a blank space, it's usually something secret that won't be revealed until the opening ceremony. Now, there are people speculating that it's because Blizzard just wants to have a lunchtime. These people are stupid. So why would Blizzard, on their biggest fucking media event of the year, just shave off two hours, leave it open, right after opening ceremony so they can have lunch? Now, that's just stupid. That's not how this shit works, alright? Now, other people are speculating it's because they want con-goers to enjoy the con without feeling like, you know, they have all these panels to go to. Some people are saying it's to get people to go to enjoy the esports events that are going on. Now, these people have a little logic, not quite so stupid, but, you know, people go to BlizzCon to see things. Panels, esports, and different people like different things. Not everybody likes esports. That's okay. So, if these last many years of having esports tournaments has, at BlizzCon hasn't piqued their interest at this point, I doubt forcing them to go is going to help. Besides, Blizzard sold esports only tickets for 25 bucks. Why would you just piss off people by making them spend 225 bucks on a BlizzCon ticket and then being forced to watch something they obviously didn't like or could have saved 200 bucks on? Now, okay, try again. Now, we've been talking about this all year now, and it's obvious Blizzard is going to announce something big and new at BlizzCon. And we know StarCraft II Legacy of the Void will probably be revealed at least more in full, you know, but there are already some panels dedicated to that. So that's not the big new thing. Now, there's a chance we could hear about the next Diablo expansion, but right now we find that kind of doubtful. Now, we know we'll hear about the next Hearthstone stuff that's out there, including probably the new card expansion, but once again, they already have panels covering that. So, that leaves us with a brand new game. Now, it could be Overwatch, whatever that is, which we believe to be Michael Booth's new game. Now, once again, we've said before, he was the lead developer for Left 4 Dead and Counter-Strike. Some people have suggested this could be sort of Blizzard's take on Team Fortress 2. There are yet more rumors that Warcraft 4 could be in the works. Could be, you know, with Bl Warcraft's 20th anniversary, Blizzard focusing on sort of the old world stuff with Warlords, and with the new movie also focusing on old world stuff, we might be seeing the remastered versions of the original Warcraft 1, 2, and 3 along with a brand new game. And it could be that we're completely off base and it's something brand fucking spanking new that we've never heard of, sort of like how Hearthstone was. Took us all by surprise, and lo and behold, it is brilliant. What we do know, it will not be Titan. It will also not be an MMO. The whole reason we believe Mike Morhaime and Chris Metzen made that big announcement that Titan was canceled is so it would not overshadow what they're planning to announce at BlizzCon. Get the Titan depression out of the way, make way for something else. So what do you think Blizzard has in store for all of us at BlizzCon this year? Let us know in the comments, and let's talk World of Warcraft. Here's the beef. So JR was right 
again. Now, he predicted a little over a month ago that patch 6.0.2 would release on October 14th, and guess what? He was dead on correct. I swear, we need a scoreboard, and it's kind of ridiculous how often JR is correct on these things. Blizzard announced this week that the much-anticipated pre-Warlord 6.0.2 patch will be releasing Tuesday, October 14th. This patch titled The Iron Tide will bring new content heralding the Iron Horde inclusion, updates to the skills and abilities for every class, and a host of gameplay adjustments. Now there will be a world event in which the Iron Horde will invade Azeroth through the Dark Portal, and it will be your duty to fight them back. Pretty cool, right? Alright, now for all you console junkies like me, let's talk some Diablo. <laughs> Stay a while and listen. So while Patch 2.1 has been live on PC servers for a while now, us console players have been eagerly awaiting this game-changing update. Well, at least for PS4 and Xbox One players, the wait is over. Patch 2.1 released on current-gen consoles on October 7th. It was honestly kind of a surprise. It was just like I was looking online and on PlayStation Blog, they're like, BAM! 2.1's live. <laughs> what? It, it was... It was, you had to bend there. Anyway, uh, console players now get to enjoy the Vault, Cesspools, Greater Rifts, and Legendary Gems. Also, a little tidbit, all right? Effective a couple days ago, it's going through October 17th, we console players are getting some bonuses. Now, personally, I think current gem, we got a little fucked on this one. But if you're PS3 or 360, you get a 100% experience bonus. And PS4, Xbox One, we get paired up treasure goblins. So whenever you normally experience a treasure goblin, there are in fact two of them. But of course, they're easy prey for my exploding palm with a monk. They just both <laughs> blow up. It's good times. Okay, let's talk some StarCraft. You want a piece of me, boy? WCS America has finished, and the last two remaining foreigner hopefuls, Scarlet and Huck, didn't happen. They could not win out in the top eight and will not advance to BlizzCon. Thus, all 16 players from WCS America, WCS Europe, and GSL in Korea are all Korean. South Korean, to be specific. That'd be kind of weird if we had a northern... Anyway, uh, so, so much for having, you know, these local heroes in it this year. Now, some of the favorites to potentially win this year, though, are Polt, who played in WCS America, MMA, who played in WCS Europe, and So who played in Korea. Now, So has consistently placed second in GSL and in major esports tournaments, so this could really be a big deal and a big breakout if he could win it all at BlizzCon. All right, not much there, I know, but let's get into some Heroes of the Storm. So the Heroes Tech Alpha is back online, and with it, New features. Now, the much-awaited custom games option is now available so players can start forming teams and competing against other teams. And we're expecting to see several community-run tournaments in the f near future. And with this comes the replay and observer mode, strangely enough beating Hearthstone to the punch on that one. Anyway, this is the feature that is needed to start pushing Heroes of the Storm into the eSports venue. And with Blizzard hosting an exhibition tournament at BlizzCon, we're expecting this title to start getting more popular very quickly in the MOBA community. Oh, I'm sorry, I called it a MOBA. No, we're not. Blizzard doesn't like it when we do that. It's a MOBA. Okay, let's talk Hearthstone. Pull up a chair by the hub. So the American qualifier is now over, and Tyrae, D2, Strife Crow, and Firebat have all won their entries into the BlizzCon tournament where the top 16 players from across the world will be competing for a quarter million dollar prize pool. Now, we would like to take this time to personally congratulate D2 for advancing, as he is a member of Don't Kick My Robot, which is our pro team partner here at BlizzPro. Now, Don't Kick My Robot and D2 personally have put together many articles for us in the past six months, and we're just so happy to see them having such success. All right. So that does it for this week's episode of Blizz Pro Weekly. Be sure to subscribe to us. YouTube, iTunes, both. Yeah, it's all good. Throw down comments whenever you please. BlizzPro.tv. You want to listen and subscribe to all those great shows. The Edge, West March Workshop, and the Hearthstone Power Hour. Me, I'm all over the internet. Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr. I'm a Goodreads author. My book is available on Amazon, iTunes, Nook, 
all over the place. It's called The Lost and Broken Realm, by the way. If you have a question, email us at askthebeard at blizzpro.com. And of course, check out blizzpro.com. All the news, reviews, interviews, everything you need to know about Blizzard Entertainment Games. Stay beardy, my friends. <laughs>